Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and it is May 19th, YC 125, and this is the Eve Universe Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going, guys? Settle on in. We have stuff to cover today. Not new stuff, training stuff. But yeah, today we are going to go over Yeet Exploration. We have seen a lot of new players coming in. And if the popularity of my returning to Eve watch this first video is any indication, there's a lot of people coming back to the game. But one of the things that is also true about this is that a lot of the people that are coming back to the game aren't like coming back to like fully fleshed out characters. A lot of them don't even have the characters that they used to have. They certainly aren't savants at the game or whatever. So they're basically like new players, but not new players. And so I have a post on Reddit that I made years ago that continues to be popular very popular, called How to Have an Adventure in EVE Online for Under for five, under 5 Million Isk Yeet Exploration. This has been very much a beloved thing. I even have people commenting like years after the fact saying that they found it again and it's still like useful to them. Not found it again, but found it then and it's useful to them. And so I figured that why not take this the next step and make a video explaining or demonstrating this article. So that's the goal of the day. Yeah, they might be disadvantaged uh, than new players because of remembering mechanics or setups that are no longer applicable. That's true, which is why it's good that they're watching my video for returning players because it helps them know what's going on. It doesn't capture everything, but it certainly does a lot of the big things that might get you killed. I'm going to show you need nothing to start with, okay? I have a brand new character. Let me introduce you to Yeetarothi. Yeetarothi was born this morning, a few hours ago. I canceled out of the tutorial. The only thing that you could say I did that was special was I used the link down below to get myself a buddy code, so that way I can have 1 million SP unallocated. That's gonna give me everything I need in order to uh, go out there. We're gonna build this character. Like I said, I canceled out of the tutorial and it stuck me right here. The only thing besides that I've done is put Kaldari Frigate into the training queue because I am, as it turns out, completely allergic to having an empty training queue. Like this is an alpha. I literally just made her today. This is a perfect total alpha. There's an alpha account right there. She has 360 or 87,000 skill points to start with. I've just made a character and canceled the tutorial. That's it, that's all I've done. And the skill, and put the skill in. It'll almost be too easy. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you guys how you can go with basically no excuse, have a fun adventure, it costs you almost nothing, you learn a lot of basic stuff, it's not the same as just like missioning or whatever, it opens up lucrative career paths, lots of uh, different adventures and stories and whatnot. It's not always good, but it's always an adventure and we're going to see some of that here. First though, I do want to talk a little bit about what Yeet Exploration is. In order to do that, I need to explain what Yeet is. For those of you who maybe memory hold most of the 2010s, which to be frank, I don't blame you. The term yeet means to like do something without consideration or it was just an exclamation of like positive behavior. <laughs> comes from this idea of like the YOLO attitude that we saw before the apocalypse happened it, where where the idea of like you only live once so do exciting things and it's like yeet and you go and do the thing mindlessly YOLO you only live once and of course I'm explaining this as someone who was old enough back then to still be like kids these days so like take it for a grain of salt but the point is is that the phrase yeet does live on in the form of yeet exploration and it's because we are throwing everything to the wind. Once upon a time, in order to do high level exploration, it is recommended that you find a wormhole that leads you to Nullsec, where you can do some of the better sites, safer, make a lot of money, and then make your way home. The Yeet filaments has basically cut that down. So we have these devices known as needle jack filaments. There's two different kinds of needle jack filaments that we're going to be looking at. And there's uh, another couple of filaments that we might look at on the other side. But we have signal filaments and we have noise filaments. Both of these filaments have the capability of teleporting you to a random system in null security space. So think signal versus noise, right? Signal in a band is like the actual message. Noise is all of the, is the noise, right? The the, the snow in the signal. So in this sense, the, the signal is designed to try to lock in on where 
where people are active in null sex. So it's going to look for a potentially active null sex system, someplace that's being ratted in or populated in in some way. We don't want that as explorers, right? We want to find the furthest out there, most lost, least seen places in New Eden. So that way we can hack and let be left alone and find good loot. So we're going to use a noise filament. A noise filament doesn't guarantee it's going to be quiet, but it's going to basically say that it's completely random and null is big. So we're going to hope for the best. All right. These are relatively cheap and we'll get to that when we get there. But you can also get these by doing data sites, which we will also see. First and foremost, let's sort out what we want to do. Well, I, I would like to set up a skill plan, but the problem is, is that in order to have some of these skills, well, I guess I could put in hacking. Let's say I wanted to pick up Galente Frigate as part of this uh, skill plan. I don't know if I have to, but I have to buy it. And I'm also going to have to buy a fit. I'm going to have to buy ships. I'm going to have to buy needles. Let's look at my wallet. I have no money. So the first thing I got to do is get that very basic amount of money that I need in order to get started. So how am I going to do that? Well, as I said, or, you know, what this character has completely canceled out of the tutorial. So, I mean, I got the stuff from the tutorial, but there is what's known as the air career program. Okay. The air career program and the career agents. If you open up your agency and go to agents and missions and go to career agents, you'll see that there are different career agents. I'm going to want to do the, uh, the exploration career agents because first of all, it will give me a lot of stuff that I need as it is, but also the exploration career agents are super fast if you know what you're doing. And it'll give us a good opportunity to kind of look at some of the basic components of this whole process. But at the same time, I'm also going to be finishing the career program. I'm going to be working on this career program. So just by completing the first career agent mission, I'm already going to get 37,000 interstellar credits, which is a big piece. If I go to my skill queue, and I go to skill plans, and I try to just set up this skill, the air skill plan, it tells me that there's a skill missing and that skill missing is repair systems. So I go to buy it and I can't, it's only 50, it's 58,000. I only have 15,000. So I need to get more ISK. I need to get a little bit of ISK. I need to get a little bit of other stuff. So we're going to head two jumps to the career agent first and foremost. I am, as I'm going to go, going to go to my general settings and move my radial menu over to my right mouse button, which I find far better to work with. So that way I can use my radial menu easier without making other things happen. And just for everybody else's sake, I'm going to go to display and graphics and turn off camera shake because a lot of people find that camera shake to be nauseating, especially if you're watching it and not playing it. The Air Explorer expert system is super strong. That's a good point too. We'll look into how much it takes to get that. Also, as I journey, I'm going to set up some basic stuff for my for when I'm out there. I'm going to want to move these to compact mode. Actually, I think you can now just go to enable compact mode by default. Compact, low transparency. So now I can go to these menus and say enable always above full screen view. And I can pull local out. I don't have to pay attention to my other chats. I can just pay attention to local. And of course, this also above full screen view, crush it down. Now I can open up my map and still see all my tactical stuff. Okay, so now I'm at the career agents and I don't need to do all of them right now. Although I do recommend doing all the career agents for a newer player or even a returning player because you get some good rewards, including some very valuable standings from doing it. So yeah, this is going to give me some ISK too. So I just undock, I accept the mission, I have to go to an anomaly. Well, anomalies are easy to go to and I open up my probe window, which this is not what I want. So we're going to pop this out using that box in a box, and then we can close this so we can see anomaly training site. We just warp to it. We're also going to want to put this so that way it stays up even over uh, full stream stream screen views. So that way we can do that and we can do that. So I make it to the site. There's the can. I burn to the can and I bounce off the rock control space to stop the warp, move away from the rock by double clicking in space away from the rock. Cut the afterburner. As soon as the afterburner finishes its red cycle, hit warp. No, I only made her Kaldari because I'm going to go to Jita, and this was for demonstration purposes. A lot of my demonstration characters are, are Kaldari for that reason, actually. Complete the mission. So now I'm going to get a, a Heron for this one, and it's just a warp to place. So undock and warp to it and claim my extra isk from the career agents or from the career path. Okay, now in the next mission, we're going to take a bit of an aside and we're going to talk about the mechanics of what we're actually talking about here, okay? So I need to scan down a, a data site. So we're going to talk about scanning. First and foremost, for the basics of scanning, you should open up your agency, go to the help section and go to scanning. There are several great videos 
that explain a lot of the basic mechanics of how scanning works. However, I want to go a little bit beyond the basics and we're going to talk a bit about how scanning actually works. So that way we can understand when we see some of the results that we see when we do scanning. Here's my Heron. It's bonus for exploration. You can see it has a bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength and also a bonus to the data and relic analyzers. So I am going to fit on it a probe launcher and I'm going to put my probes in my cargo bay. To help explain how probing works, so again, this, this assumes that you've already watched the other videos, so you know some of the basics about like, quote unquote, how to scan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one probe, shift, click, drag, put one probe and put it into the probe launcher. We're going to turn off auto reload. So I can launch one probe and then we can look in the probe window. If I probe with this one probe, our results become kind of challenging, huh? They don't really know where they are. And you can see that they're all just kind of probability zones. All right. And the reason why this is, is because what's actually happening is that each probe, it's sonar effectively. So it sends out a ping and it receives back pings. And from that, it determines an estimated place that it might be. So if you notice these rings are different sizes, that's because it knows how far away these things are approximately, but it doesn't know in what direction it is. So you see these big red spheres. In addition to that, uh, there's also jitter. There's a, there's a deviation to that. So these actually aren't exactly at the range that they say they are. In fact, if we do another scan at exactly the same place, we should find that the rings won't stay exactly the same. And we see that, right? All of the rings positions changed. And that's because there's a deviation on it. Now there's other ones, like I can tell you for a fact that this one isn't in range because I didn't hit it at all, right? So it's not within this range, even though the, the, it could be, so it's somewhere else in this sphere that of possibility. All right, so that's one probe. If we take a second probe and we load it, we take two probes. Again, this is just to demonstrate, so that way we can see how things actually work. We're gonna, what is it, hold shift? Yeah, shift. Make it so that these two probes are in fact in different places, okay? And then we're going to do a scan. So what we see here now is a bunch of rings. These rings are what happens when two probes are the ones that hit it. So now this probe and this probe both got a thing. This probe sees that it's within this distance. This probe sees that it's within this distance. But given those two distances, there's basically a ring of possibility between the two of them where those things could in fact be. So that's why you see rings. All right. We good so far? So then we can load a third probe. Launch it. Open up the probe window. And now we see we have three different positions. And we hit Analyze. Now we've got some interesting stuff going on, okay? What we have is a bunch of echoes. So like this one is paired. These two are paired up. These two are paired up. All of these different pairs. We still have a couple of rings and we have a couple of the bubbles. So what's actually happening? Well, when you have three probes that all get a location or a distance rather, what happens is that there becomes two discrete points in space that both of those three po or those points in space would resolve to the same distances to those three probes. So in the same way that we got a ring of possibility, now we have these two points in space that given these three probes, this one, if you can see like each one of the, each one of these echoes is equidistant between each other to each of these each of my probes that did the scan and that's because it knows the distance it knows it's that far away but it doesn't know if it's that far away to the right or that far away to the left in all three of these cases so that's why we see this echo but we also see a ring what's interesting about this ring is we can see from our three probes that this area in in the middle right where all of these echoes are this area in the middle is where all three probes meet which means this upper band of the ring here, the entire upper half of this ring, 
is within the range that if it was there, you wouldn't have a ring, you would have an echo, which means we can already tell that this signature is somewhere along this bottom half of the ring. This is how we can begin to start to use the results that we have to make conclusions that the probes themselves can't figure out. This guy knows that only two probes are hitting it. It's either this one and this one are both hitting this ring. But we know that if it was in the top half of this ring, that this third one up here would have also gotten a hit, and then it wouldn't be a ring. So we know it's in the bottom half of the ring. That's going to be really, really important once we start adding all of our probes. And then, of course, we can uh, add one more probe and launch it. And now we have these four different positions with some good crossover. So let's see what we get. Okay, and look, I now I'm getting full resolved signatures. And even the ones that aren't fully resolved, like this one right here, it's a single point. It's not a ring, it's not whatever. So if I have four or more probes that get a hit, then it knows at least roughly where it is. If there's three that get a hit, then, it's an, then it provides an echo. And if there's two that gets a hit, it's a ring. And if only one gets a hit, then it's a red sphere. So now... Let's load the rest of our probes and see if there's any good displays of what we're talking about in practice, especially since my probes are all wonky places now. Okay, so a lot of these resolved, but if you see that this one is a ring, but we know that a ring can only happen where two of them are crossing or where, where only two probes get it. And we can see that like there's this big convergence of probes. So we can see that this side of the ring, this little slash of the ring here, this edge of the ring is the only possibility space that it could be in. And if it was anywhere closer, I'd get a result, even if it was like a distant result. So this actually tells us a good distance. Oh, well, buoy. Now that got rid of it. All right, well, same with this echo. This echo out here is where only these three probes hit it. Whereas this lower echo, more than three probes hit it. So we know that this bottom echo is the false echo and the top echo is in fact the correct one. This is why they say that the echo that's furthest from the center is the one that's correct. Just like the furthest band of the ring is the one that's correct. This is why, this is the mechanics of how probing actually works. And there you go, see, got the hit. Now then, what am I actually supposed to do? Data site. So that's a little bit about how to probe, a little bit of advanced information about how to probe. So now with the hacking mini game, I don't have, I didn't bring a data analyzer. Let's go fix that. Spread formation is good for Intel since you don't need precise locations. Yeah, exactly. If you just need to know what's out there, it's good to have like one big broad thing that gets a lots of things with lots of hits. So that way you know basically where they're at and then zero in on whichever one you want. Now it's worth noting that this data analyzers and relic analyzer that we're fitting right now are, are civilian. So as soon as we're done with these career agents, we're going to have to replace them. Didn't grab my afterburner, whatever. We'll, we'll fix the fit in a bit. Here is the hacking mini game. When I click on a site, it'll either be something dangerous, something friendly, a cache, or it'll give me a number. If it gives me a number, like four. Four means it's I'm four jumps away from the nearest interesting thing. That's a good thing, a cache, or the core. So likewise, now I'm three, now I'm still three, so this is the wrong direction. I'm gonna go this way, two. Oh, there's a defensive node, so we're gonna check over here. Four, up. Oh, there's not even four nodes over here, so it can't be over in this area. It has to be over here. So we're gonna break through this defensive node, and then come down here, find the core, hack the core, and we're done. What's important to note is that all that matters is getting the core. Nothing else matters, so don't worry about clearing out stuff that you don't have to. Don't worry about doing anything extra. Once you've found the core, you're done. Or at least once you've killed the core, you're done. And now I also have enough money. Let's talk about skill plan. If I go to my skills, I'm just going to go to the air career plan, buy and inject. So I put those in. I have that million free SP that I got for using the buddy code. I'm going to redeem it. And that gives me the million unallocated SP. So then I open this up and I apply skill points. And I hit confirm. Boom. All those skills are done. I can go to Enforcer, and I or not Enforcer, Explorer, Kaldari Explorer, Kaldari Treasure Hunter. Let's just grab this one. Buy missing skill books. I don't have enough ISK yet. That's fine. We'll just grab all these. I just need to grab Light Drone Operations, Acceleration Control, so that's fine. And then let's see if there's any other skills I'm going to want just for this. Kaldari Frigate. Is that maxed out yet? I think that might be fine. All I really need is, let's see, Scanning Skills. Acquisition. There we go. 
Next, the whole point of this is to show how you can do this right away. The saving your million SP for after you've trained 5 million is what I recommend for blank clones, where you put in somebody, you build a bunch of characters, put in the, the Magic 15, the Magic, the magic 13? Magic? Uh-oh. Uh, magic 14. Whatever. Put those skills in, let it bake for a few months, and then you have a million SP to, uh, to specialize in. All right, complete the mission. Nope, can't complete the mission. Have to get proof of discovery relic. Yes, yeah, but don't, yeah, you don't redeem the million SP until you're done baking, because that way you can have 5 million SP allocated and 1 million SP unallocated. That is correct. So we're going to launch all of our probes this time. This says that it's a relic site, so let's go ahead and go there. And now with everything we've learned, I don't actually care if I don't hit it exactly. As long as I hit it with something, if I get like an echo or something like that, I know how to use those to my advantage. So I can actually be a little bit sloppy about stuff. Now here's an interesting one. This result is outside of the range of where it would be if it was where it was. So I can tell you right now that its deviation says that it's not where it actually says it is. So I'm going to be a little bit off from that so that way it would be where it needs to be in order to get that result. There it is. The expert system would have given you all those skills. That's true, too. Let's look at that. Because of this, I have the reward bundle, some isk. Where's the expert system come in, though? When do I get the expert system? Oh, you get it for the... Yeah, you get it for there. What, what skills do I get? Oh, yeah. That's good. That's awesome. So we're going to do that. We're going to finish up the career agents. It's even better than I thought it was. Didn't grab an afterburner still. And while I do agree with the whole, like, redeeming the million SP and training and all that stuff, that is true, but, I mean, a lot of people, let's be frank, are going to just want to use the million SP so that way they can actually get some, you know, get going. That's what this whole training is about, is about helping people get started. Get in there and get going quick. Three, two, one, boom. Like I planned it. There sure are a lot of rocks to knock off of nowadays. Enjoying the game is more important than perfect efficiency. That's very true. For the purposes of yeet exploration, data sites and relic sites are going to kind of give us two different things. One, since we're in NullSec, the relic sites are going to be where uh, a lot of the more consistent money is, okay? So we're going to want to do find relic sites for money. Data sites are going to be less money. However, data sites also come with them filaments, which are going to help us with getting around. I'm going to strip the fitting off my ibis and fit this to fit the afterburner to my active ship. Yeah, the event data sites as well. This video is not designed to focus on like the sites that are available right now. This is evergreen content. The whole point of making this is because for, it's been years since I put up my Yeet exploration guide. It's been over two years ago, and yet it's still I, I share it more than anything else. Oh, I forgot the passkey. I'm just doing I'm doing the authentic career agent experience, guys. Okay, everyone forgets the gas key the first time. All right. Not just the first time. It is a tradition. Nothing unites EVE players more than forgetting the gas key. That's true. You do have to grab it and put it in your in from your inventory to your hold. I'm going to take this opportunity to say you should like the stream. Got the gas. Let's go. And uh, once you get those, you got to redeem them too. Don't forget that. Complete the mission. All done. And I've got 1.26 million. We've got the reward bundles and the expert system. So for the next 48 hours, I'm gonna have some pretty decent uh, scanning and hacking uh, skills because of this. So we're gonna select all, redeem, boom. But uh, my ship still sucks, so I need to head to Jita. Okay, so now we're in Jita, and let's talk a little bit about the fit. We now have the, sh the skills that we need, especially thanks to the expert system. We have our expert system here, giving us all of these skills that we need. So we just need a ship. We can open up our fitting window and go to this third box here, the checkbox that says community fittings. And then we can also check this box that says current hull. And we will see that there is a Heron and there's the Caldari Explorer and there's the Air Career Caldari Explorer, which I don't remember exactly what the difference between the two of them are. 1.7 versus 1.6, eh, whatever. We can see that I'm missing one skill which is range finding two. So we can go apply skill points, boom, and then hit fit ship. And then hit yes, buy all, and we'll see how much it costs. Hopefully we have enough. 877,000 uh, ISK. So we're gonna hit buy and fit, and we have bought it, we have fit it, and now we're in it. All right, so now let's go ahead and find on the market, we're gonna look up noise. 
Oh, the exit fitting this window doesn't take extra. Whatever. I don't care. We're done. Noise five needle jack. 200,000. How much do I have? 400,000. Yes, I can get one. So let's go ahead and buy this needle jack. And now I have everything I need to go have some fun. Undock. For my fit, I have the probe launcher and the salvager that's going to be used to get my sights. And the salvagers are just because. Micro warp drive to get me around. And relic and data analyzer, both. I've got two range finding arrays and double gravity capacitor upgrades in order to help me scan down sites that may otherwise be difficult for my low skills. And I have uh, re restrained nanofibers in order to be able to make me more agile. This is designed for anybody to be able to use. I don't need a weapon. I could get drones, but I don't need them for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to warp to Jita at range like the star, and open up the filament. I'm then going to right-click on myself, go to Pilot, Form Fleet With. So now I've got a fleet with myself, and put this away somewhere. I am also going to set my safety to yellow. Now, before I leave, I do want to show that there is another couple of filaments. There is a set of filaments that allow me to enter into Pochfin, which is a special area of space. And then there is what's called the Extraction Filament, Proximity Extraction Filament, which allows me to leave Pochfin. These two filaments would allow me to come back home without having to worry about it. But A, there are 8 million total for the two of them. And B, what's the fun in that? So with all that said, yeet! Normally, I like to bring a couple of extra noise filaments, but here we are. We are in Esoteria. There's no one in local. I open up my map, and we go to the filter here, and go to Geography and Statistics, Average Pilots in, in Space. We see it's been a pretty quiet here. So perfect. This is a good place. We're going to head deep into this pocket over here, where there seems to have not been a lot of people for quite some time. And let's go ahead and get going. We have... We can actually filter out anomalies now because we don't care about anomalies and start scanning. I am looking for relic sites for money, data sites for more filaments, and wormholes for potential way home. Those are the three things that I'm looking for. Okay? And why? So each time I do a probe, I recenter it, and then I go one or two bumps down. All depend on how greedy I'm wanting to be. So as you can see here, this ring, here's a great ring, because that ring is mostly out of the way, but you can see that only the top little shard of the ring is eligible to actually be a ring. So if I just put this at the top here, and I bump it down, I should get it spot on. There you go. And it's a data site. Now, because we were doing it during the event, we could also get the event data sites, which would be pretty cool. Uh, which this is. This is a, an event data site, which is nice. Those are going to be worth money, too. So obviously the, the sites are not going to look like this necessarily when you, when you do it. I didn't make my pounce. So these site cans are going to be a lot harder. And I don't have really great hacking skills or hacking modules. So hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to do it. Now, because of this, I'm going to rely a lot on the rule of six if I can. So this one right here, you see how there's one in every direction? That means that this spot that I just went to is 100% safe or is adjacent to the core. It had a one and this had a one, which tells me that probably this one or this one is correct. Also, this one is also completely surrounded. So it's a rule of six as well as this one and this one. So I'm going to do these ones. This is two and that's one. That kind of suggests that it's probably this one, but we can also go to this one and see that it's also one. So let's just go ahead and look at that one. Yes, it is good. And then we can go up one and this is what we see or this is where we're at now. I want to go down here. There's some rule of six up there. And then the, you, you generally try to go to the opposite side. So we're going to go, I have a 90-20. I can use one of my kernel rots to cut in a half to 45, then cut into it. It takes me a couple hits. Two, two, two. So this might be a one. And if that's true, then that's a thing, but that's nothing good. So then I hit that. Three, three, two, one, zero. Two, one, zero. One, two, three. Nope, can't be that. One, two, three. Two, two. Dang it. Three. Kernel rot it to bring it down to 30. Ugh. Oh, a spike. That's, that'll work, I guess. One. No! Hey! Can I say, still make it? 20. Oh, God. Hey! Boom! Hack successful. That was a heck of a journey, huh? The core is always eight or more nodes from the starting point. Unless you start in the middle, then it's random. I don't... I never have agreed with that one. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, rule of six nodes over here. So two, one, one. 
wrench. Always use a wrench basically as soon as you get it. There's no reason not to. One. I don't like that at all. Two, two, one. Spike. I hate using spikes randomly because of that. So if you notice how much damage that suppressor did to me. Oh yeah, I'm just dead now, right? Oh yeah, I'm just dead now. So that's the problem with having such a low skills and, and a low hacker is that there's certain things that can just get you. So a suppressor without a spike is just going to kill you. So I'm going to hold on to this spike with dear life and not be greedy. But there's a lot of rule of six nodes over here. So I can look around. Oh, that's good luck. Bada bing, bada boom. 1.7 million. Now, the thing is, is that, again, if you're with a relatively low skill thing, you're going to lose a bunch. You, you might lose cans. And it, also notice that I'm spending a lot of time I having to travel between these cans. At the next site, we're going to look at how to do it so that we a little bit smarter. And so we don't have to travel between the cans in the same way. It's good that we have local so we can see that there's nobody like hunting us right now. But it's always good to move to act in a way that isn't very predictable. We're, so we're going to look at that, too. One, two. Hey, core. Manual piloting is usually pretty good. So I'm going to double click up to go around the Asbel. Two. Boo. Oh no! Can I even live? No, I just fail. Yep. God, I hate suppressors. Hey, perfect. All right, and this site is done. So now I can continue with my probing. What is that sound? Oh, shoot. I don't even have desktop audio on. Here, let's fix that. I don't remember that. I don't know about that. That's a weird sound for me to hear. Is that just the sight? It is the side ambience. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go away. Oh, it's another data site. Excellent. I left the site and I'm still getting it. Weird. So this time when I warp to the site, I'm going to hit control B first. I'm going to warp to it at 100. So I'm going to hit warp to it 100, and then I'm going to go pounce 1. And I'm going to watch to see this warp tunnel collapse notification. I'm looking for it to get to under 20,000 kilometers, I think it is. So at 13 AU, 8 AU, 3 AU. But now it's going to hit, there you go, 3 million, 500,000, 100,000, 21,000. Make the bookmark. So now I have this bookmark on grid with me and the four bl four sites. So now, rather than having to travel between them all, I just warp to the pounce, and then I can warp to whichever can I want. Oof. Whatever, I'll take the hits. Oh yeah, second spike, that's great. Hey!
And now I can hit the L key and drag and pop this out. And I can just warp to my pounce without having to worry about traveling in between it. It also makes it so that if I was in like a wormhole or something like that and somebody saw me, they couldn't actually predict where it was that I was going next. I'm just in a heron. I'm in the community fitting heron. Yeah, we are, we are doing yeet exploration, a how-to guide. So for brand new players or players, you know, no excuse, just go off and have an adventure for under 5 million isk. So we made this brand new character with no resources. And now I'm in Nullsec. System hack failed. Whoops. Boo. Where's my directional scanner? Okay. That sucks. Uh No. Am I even going to be able to do this? I'm just going to... Yeah, no. Yep, and that one blows up. I usually t tell new people not to go to Nullsec, but that's mostly me not wanting to teach them how to survive. That's the whole point of this adventure. It's awesome. They don't have to survive. If they die in a fire, then what did they lose? A couple of million? Who cares? They had an adventure. Not all adventures go well. But also, more importantly, here's the thing. They learn the advent the dangers firsthand. And the thing I love about Yeet Exploration, especially with these with this instructions, is that you do the Yeet and now you're in Nullsec. And you know, the whole idea of like, how do I go make money? And it's like, well, first you do this and then you go here and you got to find this kind of site and do this kind of thing and all this sort of stuff. Like all of that's very, you have to be the one that's going out and making, finding the thing and doing the thing. There is something very visceral of activating the fil filament. Congratulations, you're now in Nullsec. Here's how to get out. Here's what you can do while you're here. It is very straightforward. And again, Again, if all else fails, if everything falls apart, if everything dies in a giant ball of fire, who cares? You lost two million. And what did you get from it? You paid two million isk for an adventure. And if it works out, how much do you get? I mean, I've already gotten seven million in this one system, in these two sites so far. You see what I mean? That's why I like this, this as a particular way of being like, let's go do something different, guys. If you've never done exploration before, if you're new to EVE, or if you want to do something that just gets you out there, this gets you out there. And then if they have something, they'll start thinking about it. Well, what if I had a cloak? What if I had a legion? What if I had a thing? What if I did, you know, whatever. And that's when they progress, right? What does the next time you go out look like? And that's where things get really interesting. I just, I, I, pur I purposefully failed that previous can just to show you guys it's okay to sometimes fail a can, okay? It was on purpose. Look at that! Look at that! Look at how devastating a suppression node is if you don't have any preparation. That's terrible. Oh my gosh. Uh... Boom! Still win! Screw you! All right. I'm interested in how you get home with all the loot. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested too. I don't want to warp directly to the Stargate because there is somebody in the system. So I'm going to warp to the planet nearby. Oh, of course. And then he leaves. I don't want to warp directly into a warp bubble, you know? Asset safety drop off. But again, like, who cares? All that stuff. You guys are worrying too much, guys. The whole point of this is that, yeah, it could go bad, but it could be fine. Just find a wormhole and get home. That's it. Oh my god, it's going to still keep making that sound? Well, okay. Are we sure that's Eve? <laughs> Alright, so in this system, I want to scan down stuff, but I need to find a, a safe place to be. So I'm just going to uh, warp to the star, and make a bookmark, and just t let, put in safe. And I'm going to wait till I'm about halfway through warp. Pop it. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off for you guys, so that way...
You don't have to bear with it, I guess. Drop my drones, head to the site. You, you say that I'm, I'm taking a lot of knowledge for granted. If, if I'm missing something, please throw out any sort of suggestions. But we also showed off quite a bit of stuff, and I'm doing this for demonstration. We have other videos on some of the stuff of exploration. And as I said, a lot of the basics in, of exploration is in the agency help videos, which I strongly recommend. My goal is to find a wormhole home. Correct. Fear is the mind killer. But that's the whole thing. That's one of the reasons why I love using this as a mechanic, okay? Or as a, as a way of teaching somebody. Because, like, you can be told about how spooky Nullsec is, but it isn't until you go out there and see it for yourself do you actually truly understand what is and isn't dangerous. And let me tell you, it's not as dangerous as a lot of people make it out to be. A lot of people come back and they're like, wow, that was way not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I barely saw anybody. I'm not talking about the music. I'm talking about the beep, the, the, the sonar sound that's happening in the background. Okay, a relic site. Once again, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go pounce one. Wait till it gets to like about 20,000 or so uh, kilometers. 9,000, that's good. So as I said, relics are going to be uh, more about consistent money. I, by the way, every time you warp back and forth, this thing is going to pop up, so I just like to put it off in the corner. Be like, shh, go away. And this is a, this is a more normal site. This is a site that you will definitely find if you go and do exploration. The relic hacking is just the exact same as the, as the data. These uh, hacks are going to be a lot easier than the one I just did, because the event site hacks are some of the hardest hacks in the whole game. So this is a green hack, as you can see, I can more or less just kind of brute force my way through it, even with my rudimentary skills. And look, I already just, I just got 13 million isk in this one can. So that's pretty sweet. Now, admittedly, Sancha is one of the best places to do relic sites. So I got really lucky with my positioning. But again, that's the whole point of these yeet explorations. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's dangerous, sometimes you jump into 1DQ. Spoiler alert, uh, Noel's full of more Care Bears than uh, Isaac is. When you do a hack, you hit the thing, and then if it's still alive, it hits you. So with my 25 virus strength, as long as the thing has less than 25 cohesion when I hit it, I don't take any damage at all. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Why I always 1DQ? Because, well, it's, it's a combination of things. One, it's, you know, one of the most active null sex systems in the game. Two... Get, people trying to get into 1DQ is kind of a meme. And three, because it is so active, uh, a lot of you know noise filaments will end you up in and around goon space. So, oh, that's going to hurt. I hope I don't need to break through that guy. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, well, so this rule of six means that there's something right there, but I'm so, I am so screwed when it comes to actually getting it. So... That still won't work. Okay. I need more hit points. Oh my God. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, I still feel good about that one. That was tense. I, I could have given up on that one. That's, I could have given up on that. Should have given up on that one, arguably. Lots of rule of six on this one. Stop! Hey! Thank you. Well, on the one hand, it's a rule of six. On the other hand, it's a suppression node. So just for funsies, that's the fucking nightmare. And now I just lose. Now I just lose. Now I just lose. Knew where it was, still lose. Spike. Hey. There we go, 10 million. So if you think about it, my cargo now, I, I start out with nothing, built up 1. what, 3 million, 4 million, and I already have 31 million in my cargo bay. 
already starting to think about figuring out how to get home, right? <laughs> yeah! Adrenaline rush. All right. And what's fun is, is that, like, sure, this is exciting, but then once you get to the higher-end stuff, suddenly you're going to feel like you're cheating because you grew up, you know, doing things this way. Then you're going to suddenly be like, oh, wait, I can break everything in one less hit, which means that things just don't do damage to me anymore. Damn it. Thirty-four million. Thirty-four million. That was five intact ar armor pit plates in that one can. Woo -wee. I really hope CCP puts muzzle, more puzzles in the game. Reskinning the hacking, hacking minigame for other stuff could be add a lot of gameplay options. Well, they've been putting in some new ways of like utilizing the game hacking minigame, and there are you know there are some things. So okay, after these three sites, I have sixty-six million isk in my. 60 so my my ship itself is like 1 million there's another two and a half million okay keep scanning we got that echo so we know that the echo is in the further position older project discovery mechanics could be used somehow that'd be cool game is a puzzle it's a series of problems to solve. SSCT data site. And there's no results, which means it's too high. Let's try that. There are lots of really good ways of making some good money and going on an adventure. That's for sure. Oh my gosh, so much rule of six. All the rule of six. It's all fives too. Dang it! <laughs> hey! Unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to leave this. This is going to be my last data site for today. We're just going to pretend like there aren't a million data sites in NullSec right now. So that way I can try to get home. So I could just log out here. Like if I was just, if this was my actual exploration character, honestly, with this many sites, this few people and being in Sancha space, I'd probably just log out here, to be honest. But for the purposes of the demonstration, we are going to try to find a wormhole at home. Man, you're so funny, game. You're hilarious. You're so funny. You're so funny. You're so funny. I'm laughing. For those of you who don't know, that was a suppression node that went into a rule of six restoration node. Just to let me know that I knew where the core was, but I was never going to see it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. And at the same time, I'm also going to go to Eve Scout and... Grab the Thera bookmarks and go to locations. So then I'm going to go Jita. Gosh darn it. I just, I just burned away. Well, that is one of my attempts. That's a whole bunch of jumps too. Yeah, that's not going to work either. All right, wormhole it is. Oh my God. Well, that one's blown up. That's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Let's go. It's even funnier that it was only protecting 0.5 mil of loot. Yeah, no kidding. I'm just going to try to find a wormhole home or a real data site with uh, actual filaments in it. That way I can film it to somewhere else. Like I said, or I could just log out here. This place would be a great place to stay and hack, to be honest. I'm going to take this opportunity to say that if you learned anything here today, uh, make sure to like the, the video. If you know something that I haven't covered, make sure to add it as a comment down below. If you do like my videos, always make sure to watch them all the way through as well as like them, because that's what helps YouTube think that my content's worth watching. Nullsec Blue AO Rare Asteroids, huh? These things are cool. They have really good... uh. Or in them. That's actually quite a bit of rock. Definitely more than they get in high sec. There's so many data sites out here. Did I show you guys how to get through wormholes to get back home? Well, you know, I mean, it's just we're, what we're running into here is the universal rule of you always find what you're not looking for. So now that I need a wormhole, 
I don't find one. It's just that simple. It's just all exploration. Ex, all exploration is is a number game. But again, this is part of the adventure, right? If I was just some young buck trying to do stuff, I've got plenty of sights. I've got some cool. I, I had some people to dodge. I've got some wormholes to find. I'm not in any pressure to get home. I'm not trying to wrap up a stream as a new player. This is just an adventure for me. I can log out at any time and just log back in and keep going. No pressure whatsoever. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. This is an awesome way to like just spend an evening, right? Throw together five million is. I don't care how much you have in your bank. I don't care how experienced you are. Just see what Eve has to offer you. Grab a brand new, like a low class frigate and a filament and go see what happens. And the other cool thing is, is that as doing this, you look like a brand new character. So if somebody attacks you, they feel bad about it, maybe. So I'm gonna do a pounce at the wormhole. I'm gonna look at what kind of wormhole it is. Dangerous unknown parts of space. Not great, but we're just, we're still gonna see what it is. That means it's gonna be a C4, C5, I think. Okay, let's Google this system, J. Two one five 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 four. It has the class five, and in Z kill, it has had four kills today. Well, that's not great. And there's a Fortizar. Let's get to scanning. Oh shoot shoot shoot! Oh, don't do that. Always bookmark your exit. Oh, there's a Helios. There's a Helios. So now I particularly got to keep an eye out for combat scanner probes. Is otherwise this adventure is going to have a unhappy quick ending. When there's these many sites, I just like to zo zoom in and like be like, all right, well, just give me whatever I get. And there's my pounce. This one goes to dangerous unknown parts of space as well. I think that's the static. Dangerous unknown parts of space. Man, come on, stop. Stop it with this dangerous unknown nonsense. And this wormhole leads to dangerous unknown parts of space. Stop. Just just stop. Welcome to C5s. I know, right? It is true. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Dangerous unknown. This is nonsense. This is, this is nonsense. Utterly ludicrous. Inconceivable. Unacceptable. Very dangerous. Much wormhole. Wow. <sighs> Here's another wormhole. Here's another wormhole. What's this one gonna be, guys? What's this one gonna be? Are we gonna break our record? Or are we gonna stick with it? What do you guys think? We've got five so far. One of them goes to Nullsec. The rest of them dangerous unknown. What's it gonna be, guys? Dangerous unknown! Hey! It's almost like there's some C5 highway or something. Utterly ludicrous. Utterly ludicrous. Now it's more surprising that there's only four kills in there today. You know, that's a solid point, actually. How am I still alive? Data site, give me a break. Bob loves me and doesn't want me to leave. Self-destruct? I've got 80 million in my cargo bolt bay. I'd really prefer not to. So this wormhole appears, barring this site, this scan being something. This, this is what we in the biz would call a dead end. I jumped into a different wormhole. Screw it. Let's keep going. This one is J210750. It is a class 5 pulsar and hasn't seen a kill in a couple of days. Let's get going. See, the nice thing about doing that big, broad uh, scan from the center that I do at the very beginning is that it causes a lot of echoes and it causes a lot of rings. And while I do move the probes, I know that it was roughly centered. So from that, I can make a lot of really educated guesses about where things are. Like, for instance, this one here is the probable one. Dangerous unknowns? I guess I was wrong about the probable one. Might be worth checking the Thera. The closest Thera bookmark was 32 jumps. It'll be worth checking it on the other side of the... Um, the uh, Nullsec one, yeah. I always set perches as a habit, so even if I forget to mark the hole, I have a perch on grid. It's a good idea. Dangerous unknown. Dangerous unknown. Oh no, and now I've got four WH4s. Hold on. Uh, edit location, WH5, whatever. 
if you were just thinking to yourself, man, Ben's such a cool dude, but I want to be able to support, but you know, I don't, I don't have five bucks to spend. That's perfectly fine. Just keep watching the video, hit that like, and share it with a friend. You too can be cool, just like Ben. Except for not like Ben, because he did all of that and gave me five bucks. So, you know, there's that. Dangerous unknown. Dangerous unknown. Dangerous unknown. Now, this happens because there is, a, you know, a lot of C5s have connections to C5s, but then there's also C5 to C5 roaming connections too, right? Which just makes it so that there's always those. <laughs> Ganai just got into my house, asked me to join stream. Great. Ganai, you don't need to break into people's houses to tell them to watch the stream. Like, I appreciate your enthusiasm, man. You're a good dude, but don't break into people's houses for me, please. Dangerous unknown. I'm just going to pop back out the null sec. See what's there. I can't find a C2 static. Tenerifis. Tenerifis. Okay. Can I hear he is fine? Nobody's breaking into his house. <laughs> can I has uh, investigated his own operations and has determined that it's all perfectly fine, guys. Don't worry. Personal locations. 16 jumps to Thera. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Otherwise. That's a pretty, that's a pretty empty path through Detroit, to, through Detroit, through Detroit, though. So let's, let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Oh boy, that's a regional gate. So there's nothing over there. All right, well, let's try to make a, nope, I don't want to do that. You don't want to go directly from one to the other because that way you have like a straight path and that's not super awesome. So I'm going to go to this planet first. The whole point is I'm showing how how easy and fun and exciting yeet exploration is. This isn't about doing it the safest, best way. It's about having an adventure for two million isk. My problem is, is that now I'm in Nullsec and I can't find my way home. That is an adventure. If I had a Pochton filament, then I would just use it and be home. That's not fun. I want fun. So I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere until I can figure out a way out. And that's just the way it is. What I've always envisioned out of this, uh, back in the day, I used to play Minecraft a lot. And I played uh, modded Minecraft. And I had a, a version, or I had a thing called Thomcraft, which would allow you to make all these little magical items to use. And one of them was a portable hole. And so the portable hole, you could put it on a wall or put it on, if you put it on somewhere, it basically check to see if it could burrow a hole, like a hole straight through to something. So like if you had a, if you had a hill, you could use it and it would just carve a hole straight through the hill and then you could pick it back up or whatever. Well, what I would do is I would run around, point straight down, and then activate it, causing me to fall inside of a random cave uh, and then try to figure out my way out. This is literally that exact same concept, but in EVE. Here I am stuck in the null sack with you and or lava. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes you fall directly into lava. That's the, that's, that's the cost of having an adventure. So far, I have some diamonds. So I'd like to not fall in lava, but I accept the fact that that is very much possible. Portable hole. It is a D&D thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it always feels safe when there's a cargo container next to the wormhole. Unknown parts of space. Unknown parts of space with a cargo container outside of it. Should be fine, right? This is fine. That is super fine. Nothing to be concerned about. What happens if you try to put a portable hole inside of a portable hole? It's a bag of holding. If you, if you to put a bag of holding inside of a portable hole, one thing happens. And if you do a... I think it's portable hole into a bag of holding is a big explosion. Bag of holding into portable hole is a big explosion. Portable hole into bag of holding is rip into astral... Is a rip and tear into the astral plane, if I remember correctly. Unknown parts of space. You know, this one's unknown parts of space, but it doesn't have a can next to it. Let's go ahead and look at it. I haven't even checked this wormhole. Hold on. J212319. It is a class two! Hell yeah! Maybe. Jump mid reload? Doesn't that keep the reload? I don't know, maybe. Is it a high sex static? Miracles abound. Bob be praised. You guys are awesome, by the way. I, I have so much fun hanging out with you dudes. I probably should have bookmarked the wormhole just so I'd have one of the signatures scanned, but I got kind of excited. I'm also just going to scan everything anyways, I suppose, so who cares? That's the null sec one. Yeah, see, I could have avoided this whole thing by, uh, if I had had my bookmark, then I wouldn't have re-scanned down the wormhole I came out, came in through. I want to remind everybody, there's nothing that I am doing today that you could not do, like, immediately. I made this character this morning using a buddy code and doing just the career agents for exploration. And here I am, hopefully soon, getting my filthy riches back to high sec. High security space! So, the good news is, it looks like it's Galente. The bad news is, uh, bets that it's solitude? Taking bets. 
taking bets of whether or not just based on my luck today just based on my luck today bets that it's solitude and solitude <laughs> i think that's a fitting end to this journey today all right. Well, today we did cover all of everything that you need to know in order to go on an adventure for yourself, starting with absolutely nothing in EVE Online and coming out uh, potentially very loaded or potentially very dead. Either way, very exciting, very fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just another activity to jump into in EVE Online. I have been Ashrothy. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put EVE into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Share it with some friends. I have other videos back, including people returning to EVE Online. I've got updates on what it all has changed. I've got advice on how to use your overview, manage your assets setting up your UI, uh, doing certain, like all kinds of different operations. I have a massive fitting guide where we go over every single module and consideration for fitting you could possibly need. It's a pair of videos, six hours long, but by the end of it, you too could be a fitting master. And we have so much more because that's what we're here for. We're here to maximize player engagement with EVE Online and to help you get into it. Thank you so much for those gifted subs, LM5, uh, LM1. And thank you all for checking this out. I do want to give an extra special thanks to my sponsors, including and especially Abyssus, Aikiwara Zuchan, Ar uh, Arcus Erling, Aradenika the Queen, Belligerent Neckbeard, Black Rose Noble, Dejant Lamont, Drake, Golden Age Stories, J. Coon, Lumi, Malik Starfire, Midnight Space Monkey, Not Just Fun, Seeds of Plenty, Serenaline with No Eyes, Siliana Valesh, Tijen Tijen, Nephilim, Grendel, Yanti Leopuf, Lipuf, uh, Zalnex, as well as my Immortal Tier play, uh, supporters, 745 MPSI, Ebo Elite, May, Mercuton, Nihilum, LM1, and Rid. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I have been Astrothi, the voice of New Eden, and I'll see you in space. If you want to join those people, join my Patreon or join a membership for just a dollar. Also, merch. Didn't finish this out right, but who cares? See you guys soon. 07.